The 15 Point Plan is part of the Winmate Give Podcast Network. Welcome to the 15 Point Plan Podcast. This is Jolene. I'm your host here along with my co-host, the fearless Chad Himes. And we're excited today because we've gone through each of the 15 point plan and some of them even in depth. But today we're going to take a step back and that is to to look at who's behind this podcast and um, hear their story just a little bit. I think you'll find it inspiring and I think you'll find it um, encouraging on your own 15 point plan journey of how you can transform your own health. Um, ways that it can be manageable for you. And plus, this guy, he's pretty entertaining and exciting to talk to. So I'd like to welcome Chad Himes. Well, hi, Jolene. Hey, Chad. So let's start right away with talking a little bit bit about who you are to the core. Okay, before I get there, can I go back to what you said on the intro there? Because you said we're going to hear their stories. Well, you're the co-host. So does that mean at some point I'm getting to do this for you? Can I just respectfully say no? Because I think we're <laughs> weaving it throughout, but sure, yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, Jolene, I'm excited to share the journey I've been on and hope that it does help somebody who's out there for it. Uh, who am I to the core? Wow, that's a that's an interesting question. I don't even know how to probably answer that one. Um, I am a direct, to the point, rough around the edges guy who's got strong opinions and been blessed with leadership and communication skills my whole life. How's that for an answer? Gosh, well, and I don't don't think people get asked that question very often, like, who are you to the core? So well done on that. Thank you. Well, and I think like, were you always that person or did you say, hey, this is the person that I want to, to become? And then you went on a journey to get there. Some of it, yes. Some of it, journey. Uh, I was, I mean, I've always been loud. I mean, my friends are probably listening to the episode joking that they didn't actually need the podcast. They just heard us recording because I was just naturally loud. Uh, I've always had leadership skills. They have been harnessed and fine-tuned as I went through life. I have always been highly competitive and I've definitely always been rough around the edges. Uh, I'm the guy who my dad used to always tell me as a kid that I need to think before I speak. And I never did. I would always just, what I thought was what I was going to say, and I'll deal with the repercussions after. So a lot of it is probably me and has always been me. Well, I, I took a few words that I thought of in your description Uh-oh. of like who you are. And, and I introduced you as fearless and I would add bold, confident, and uh, you're, you're really direct, but you're also encouraging. Right. Like, but you don't get, you don't let people just sort of like get away with something if they say they're going to do it. You, you have like this belief in other people that they're going to do what they said that they were going to do and that they're capable of it. Well, sure. I mean, I just sent a text message on a text group that you and I are on to uh, a friend of ours, Ryan, who's running with us. And yesterday he said he was going to do a sunrise run because I had done one yesterday. He said, okay, you've challenged me. I'm going to do one. And I just called him out this afternoon and said, where's your sunrise run? Uh, (laughs) Good example. I'm around. I'm going to be direct to you. But yes, my goal is because I know you can be better than who you are. And that's one of the parts of my mission statement is to help others achieve more than they ever thought possible. So I'm going to help people get there. And sometimes I got to drag them there. And that really shines through. And I know your your personality isn't for everyone in the coaching arena, mm-hmm. right? And yet my experience with you is that it's often very effective Thank you. with that combination. So you do actually have a, a coaching program, don't you? I do, yes. And what's that called? Uh, Ember Seminars. It's my speaking and coaching company. And yes, I do one-on-one health relationship and uh, business coaching. Okay. And Chad didn't know I was going to promote this today. I did not. But that's um, not why we're here. I I think it's done a lot for people that I I know personally. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So we know a little bit more about you now, Chad. Yep. Um, Tell me a little bit about your personal life, though, before we jump into health. Personal life. Amazing wife. Amazing wife. I mean, Nita is the rock uh, in my world. She's the one who's helped with a lot of the transformations. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a 20 year old daughter who's uh, an Oregon duck. Go, ducks. Um, 
mom lives across the country in, in Florida, and I know she wishes that we were closer every single day. Great. And and then you guys. You're my family. No siblings right. uh, in, in that regard. Um, I've got my friends who are, are my family. Good. I kind of led you there, didn't I? Yeah, Perfect. Sure. Thanks for not forgetting about us. <laughs> cool. Well, we, we're here to really hear about your health story, but I think we yes. needed to know that first because a lot of who you are today is from going on this journey where you weren't looking for next day results or next month results. You were committed to the long haul of what you wanted to change in your life, both mentally and physically. Yes. So tell me a little bit about where you started in your health journey, Chad. You said that you were once a fat and unhealthy person. Oh, yes. And that's a tough word for me to actually use on air, but I'm going to use it today. Yep. Um, Chad's allowed me to do that. Tell me about that space that you were in, more of that negative space that you were in. What led you to that space initially? At my worst, Jalene, when I was carrying around 250 pounds, uh, I'm only 5'10", so um, my world was a complete disaster. I, there's no easiest way. It started when uh, my daughter was going to be born, and I put on the sympathy pregnancy weight. That's always the best excuse. Yeah, absolutely. It was the best excuse. If she's going to eat bonbons, I'm going to eat bonbons, <laughs> right? And, uh, and then it just got worse and worse and worse. The relationship fell apart, um, went through a divorce, went into some very dark mental spaces that came along with that. And mom, I love you. But one of the habits my mother had created in me was snacking. There were always candy dishes around the house. There was always snacking. My mother was that good mother who, are you hungry? Can I make you a sandwich, right? Do you want some more? Do you want more to eat? Do you want mm -hmm. more to eat? She always made sure I was fed. So to me, when I mentally go into a dark place, the first place I usually go is a bag of chips or something along those lines to satisfy the cravings. And it just added up and added up and added up. And you don't put on the weight overnight. So you can't expect it to come off overnight. But that's when one day I looked down and realized I was carrying 250 pounds. Wow. And it didn't, like you said, it didn't happen overnight. It yeah. happened over a long period. It happened slowly but suddenly. Yes. Right? And I think we want to prevent people from doing that and ourselves. And we want to be able to say, if you're already there, you're in that space, here's how you can work your way out one step at a time. Now, you had some negative things going on in your life, right? I did. Not, not all of which you could necessarily control, at least at face value, right? Relationships and so on. Sure. So I'd like to ask you a little bit about um, the moment that you decided to make a change. Do you remember like a specific moment where you're <sighs> sitting there and you're like, you know, of course, the sh sun shining through the clouds, like... Yep. That, that aha moment for Absolutely. you? Absolutely. I was, was in it? Cabo San Lucas. Uh, I was with a group of people who I had been working with. I was on a, a team, and we earned a trip to Cabo San Lucas for New Year's Eve, and we were all down there. And we were at one of those all-inclusive resorts, so there was alcohol and food, all we could have. Right. And I was taking advantage of both of those. And we were sitting around having dinner, and one of the people at the table, Brian— uh, had gotten onto the conversation of talking about the Las Vegas marathon that he had just run three or four weeks previous. It was at the beginning of December that year. And I had had seven, eight, nine too many on the drinking probably. And I just shot my mouth off and said, I can do that. And it took about half a second for everybody at the table to say, you can't, I bet you, you can't. And I immediately went, you're on, you're on, you're on, you're on. I took every wager at the table right there. Uh huh. Uh, that was the moment, and I did absolutely nothing about it. But that was the moment when I made the decision to do it. I got back home, did nothing. I really? went and bought new running clothes because okay. I wanted to look good running, right? I bought a treadmill for my house. I was a single dad at that time. My daughter lived with me 90% of the time. She was four. I couldn't just go do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. I had to work around her world and her schedule at that time. I bought a treadmill, put it in the house, and all that. So the decision had been made, but no action was taken. So I think the question you really want to know is, Chad, when did you actually start taking action? Okay, that was the day for some reason I got onto the treadmill and I started running just to see what I could do because this marathon thing was nine months away. And I got on the treadmill, put on my music. My daughter was watching SpongeBob or some Nickelodeon entertainment thing to give me some time. 
And I remember huffing and puffing and running and in excitement of how far I had gone, I hit the stop button on the treadmill and realized I had actually only gone half a mile (laughs) and I couldn't go any farther. I wasn't expecting that. No. Um, And I laid down on the treadmill and I cried. It's probably one of the few times in my life I can remember crying. Interesting. And my four-year-old came over to me and she towered over me as I laid on the treadmill. And she put her hands on my shoulder and she looked at me in the eyes and she said, Daddy, you can do anything you want to. And that's the moment, Jolene, that I realized that I had been lying to my daughter if I didn't get up and start running. Wow. Do you, know, do you want Dave to pause so you can go grab some Kleenex? Sorry about that. I didn't, <laughs> no, I'm getting emotional. Yeah. Um, that was the day. And the minute I realized that if I didn't run this marathon... I had proven to my daughter that it was a lie. I had to that day change everything in my life, and that's the day I did it. So you were tapping into a built-in purpose that was so much greater than yourself. Absolutely. Right? If she wasn't in the room that day, would that have ever happened? Nope. If she didn't come in and say that at that time, I probably either would have run the marathon and just been an out-of-shape guy running one and then just been happy. That changed everything. We have to figure out who we're doing this for, and it's never going to be us to motivate ourselves enough. That's really great to look at. Now, what other changes did you have to make? Everything. You had a greater purpose, but you also had some of these other negative events and situations happening in your life. Did you have to change other things to stay, not only start the journey, but then stay on it? Some of them, right? I mean, financially, no, I was a mess at that time, and that had nothing to do with my health journey. Relationship, no, I was a mess at that time, and it had nothing to do with my relationship journey. But for my health journey to just take on the goal of this marathon thing that was in front of me to prove to my daughter, I had to change my diet. I had to change many of the habits in my life. I had to put drinking on a, not a side, but I had to limit it. Uh, I just had to make so many changes, everything that involves the world of health in that requirement. And it was something I wanted to do because of who I was doing it for. And did you end up running that marathon? Oh, yeah. I ran the marathon, uh, no problems on the marathon. I actually had uh, many of the people ask me to go double or nothing uh, because they knew I was going to do it because I had dropped 60 pounds in my training. Sure. Um, They bet me that I couldn't do it in four hours and 30 minutes. So to answer the question and kill the suspense, uh, four hours, 29 minutes, 39 seconds. (laughs) Because someone put a goal in front of me and said, you can't do this. And I said, watch me. And that was my first of two marathons, and I don't know that I'll ever run that far again at one time. We'll see. Uh, that's a long no plan. One. Well, and let's be clear. It's okay to do something because you want to prove someone wrong as oh, yes. long as it's healthy, right? Yes, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And just because I've done it once doesn't mean I have to keep doing it. Exactly. But you prove what you were capable of and you had never done that before. And that was part of your momentum. You chose an event. Like there's lots to learn from this example. Find a bigger purpose than yourself. Mm-hmm. Prove yourself or other people wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Or prove yourself right. Yep. And then um, pick something that's a milestone that you can work towards that actually forces you to have to take action and maybe create some discipline Um, change is really hard for anyone, Chad. Yes. Like I have seen the most successful people in business have really big struggles in, in their health. Yep. And it's actually, um, almost a life mission for me to be able to like reach out to to those, that audience and, and really help them because we don't want to sacrifice the success of our businesses, but it's not worth it if we're sacrificing our health, right? Correct. So let's go back to this concept of change. Okay. Um, Give us some some more tips and ways that you used in your journey, because again, it didn't happen overnight, of how you started some of the first things you picked to change, and then how you layered that on over time and how you stuck with it. So it's it's the concept that we've talked about many times. We talk about it on Win Make Give podcast. It, it's in books all over the place. It's habit stacking, right? So you've got to start small. You've got to start with something you can change. So then you can build more habits up. So it started with walking. I mean, we busted this myth of 10,000 steps, what it really means. It was a marketing ploy, but it started with walking more and then walking more became, okay, now I can run part of it. And then running became, okay, I can do this. Diet became, look, I'm not going to change my diet overnight and go crazy, but I'm going to stop eating this and I'm going to replace it with that. It's small little changes that we're going to be able to make. And we have to understand there's going to be setbacks, tons of them along the way. And the question is, can we remember why we're doing it? 
Because Jalene, the question you haven't asked me was once I lost that weight, what happened? I put it back on. Not all of it, but I did the roller coaster ride that so many mm -hmm. of us do in life, right? I went down, I went up, I went down, I went up as environment and situation changed until I finally got myself to a point that I could create the habits that created the image. Now I don't have a choice because it's how people see me that I have to live up to the image I've created for myself. Mm, interesting. So before we started the podcast, you you sort of walked me through your weight loss journey and yep. you talk, told me about those ups and downs and you gave me like a starting number and then where that yeah, went. 250 and then, pounds down to 180, up mm -hmm. to around 200, 220. That was living in Ben's basement, eating Dairy Queen blizzards on a regular <laughs> basis. Thanks, Ben. Uh, got myself all the way down to 169 on a challenge while I was uh, living with Nita. Could I get under 170 before our wedding? Um and she helped with all of that, put some weight back on because it wasn't natural for me to be that light. Ended up back around 180, 190, went on another weight loss challenge when I joined Orange Theory Fitness because they had a cash prize. So, hey, I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. um, dropped back down to about 170 pounds or so. And now I'm happy at around, we'll say 180, give or take a few pounds either way, depending on the okay. season and what I'm training for. And you probably look great at 190 or, or whatever, but then you went down to 160 something. Why was that important to you? Just to prove I could. Okay. And also to see what it would feel like. The last time I had been that light was like high school on the way up. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then it realized it made me realize that that's not who I want to be. Right. One of my favorite quotes of all time, Jalene, is, is FM Alexander, who says, People do not decide their futures, they decide their habits, and their habits decide their futures. And I realized my future was not a guy who was 169 pounds. Mm -hmm. My future was a guy who was 180-ish pounds, depending on situation, and then I had the habits that built the 180-pound guy. Yeah, and you and I have very different philosophies on on lifestyle and diet, right? Yes, I had ice cream for dinner last night. Exactly, and, and I, I did give out. Ben, I got, gave Chad shit for that, right? Yes. Um, however, like, what I admire about you is that you have the sense of balance. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about what that balance looks like, how you maintain where you're at right now, which is apparently a very, like, energetic and happy space for you. Absolutely. So mentally, it's a happy space. Physically, it's a happy space. If I need to, as I said, go into a competition for a race, I know how to drop a few pounds. If I want to bulk up for a race for a Spartan style, because I need the, the strength, I can. It's always about balance, right? We have to have the balance in our life. Now, balance doesn't exist, right? It's the concept of counterbalancing back and forth between things. So we have to think of it like the seesaw, that goes up and goes down and goes back. It never sits in the middle. I've mm -hmm. never seen a seesaw that just balanced. It's either all the way up or all the way down, depending which side you're looking at. And that's okay because the purpose of the seesaw isn't to stay all the way up or all the way down. It's to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on mm -hmm. this. So what did I do yesterday morning? Yesterday morning, I woke up, I went out, and I ran an eight and a half miles, right? Why? Because I knew for dinner that night I was going to have ice cream. Mm -hmm. Nita and I had discussed and said, we're going to have ice cream for dinner. So I knew I needed to go out and earn that dinner. So I was able to do it. On the normal days, I'll work out what my normal workout is. I know what my diet is. You see me. We're here recording the podcast. I have food in front of me. You've said, hey, I'm hungry. Give me a... I'm like, I can't. These are weighed out to the yes. ounce as Chad to what I need to eat. will not share his food with me. No. Let, let's just put this on air because... Yes. I always come in hungry for some reason. I'm always ready to eat. And Chad's got his pre-measured meals. But this doesn't seem like a chore for you. It's not. And it's, for some people, it's like, man, that would be a chore. Or like, I would just maybe not enjoy that. So I want you to talk about that piece right there. Sure. I won't meal prep. How do you, how do you, how do you like do this and enjoy it? it? Because I love the results, right? It's the results that come from it, the reward that comes from it. So one of your favorite books, Jolene, that you've been reading again and again and again lately has been? Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits, yeah, right? Yeah, it's on repeat like a broken record. Right. So what uh, James talks about in Atomic Habits as, as he's talking is he gives you the four things of the habit loop, right? Yes. He gives you the cue, the craving, the, the um, response, and the reward that comes with it. And the way you've put it is you make it obvious, Right. And then you you make it um, uh, attractive to you. Then you make it easy and then you make it satisfying. So to me, I start with the make it satisfying. And then I'm able to work backwards on the loop. OK, give us an example of that. OK, I like how I look and how I feel. 
Uh huh. Okay. So that's the reward that's going to come from it is the medals I can earn at races. It's going to come from the image that I've created. It's going to come from the compliments I get from my wife or I get from other people. It's when we go run this Ragnar race and I'm going to be the fastest one on the team, right? It's, it's, there's my reward. Oh, heck yeah, you will be. Absolutely. There's my rewards. So then I have to go backwards and I have to say, okay, what do I need to do to make it easy for myself? Okay. I need to control what I'm going to eat because mom made me a snacker. Mom, if you gave me a bag of pretzels, I would just all of a sudden be through it. And I went through the health kick where I said, well, I'll eat Mm -hmm. more almonds. So I go to Costco and I bought the bag of almonds. And then you ate the whole thing? Yes. (laughs) You know how many (laughs) servings and and how much fat that would be? That's completely unhealthy, right? Uh But we think we're being healthy because we don't do the research. We don't learn what we need to do. So I've hired other people and I've learned and I've done my research on it. So to make it easy... How hard is it to grab a little food scale and take Mm -hmm. a scoop of pretzels and go, yep, one ounce, done. That's a true serving. I can identify with this whole snacking thing because I make my my kids like mac and cheese for dinner or whatever. I make the homemade stuff with the good noodles, but I end up like taste testing everything, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, I lost some weight last year and and everyone said, oh, you're too skinny. So I'm like, well, I can eat that piece of cake or I can eat that candy. Chad, I woke up four months later. 10 pounds heavier. Because you created a habit of eating that one little extra piece of whatever. And it was the smallest little decisions that led me there. So I actually like that being, you know, a piece of advice that you're sharing with the audience about like, watch what you're, what you're grabbing for throughout the day, because that can really impact your goals. And then also, is it not just like going to get you, you know, cause you to gain weight and get fat, but is this fueling my mind? Like, is this nutrition to my body or is it just empty calories? And the difference between you and I is you'll have various, I I got no problem grabbing a handful of chocolate covered almonds. There's nothing wrong with that. The almonds are the fats, there's carbs in it. I'm going to burn the sugar off like crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about the sugar. Folks, Jolene and I don't agree on everything. And Mm -hmm. you'll hear more in the nutrition section when we go deep on it. I have no problem with sugar. Now, I'm not going to sit there and just take scoops of sugar and eat it. But you can be sure when I'm running, what's my Mm go-to? Sour Patch Kids. It's sugar. But I'm burning it off as I'm using it. I'm taking it in and I'm pushing it right back out of my system. I'm not worried about things like that. What I'm worried about is making sure that I'm getting the right balance of carbs, proteins, fats for my life, which we've talked about in the overview and we will go deeper into the nutrition. And all it takes is 30 seconds to grab a handful of something and throw it on a little scale Mm -hmm. because the results are what I want. The reward is what I want. So it's become easy to make the actions happen. I love that. And uh, will you do an episode for us on food measuring and how that can work for someone's lifestyle and diet? Sure. During the nutrition, when we go deep, we'll do one of the episodes will be about weighing out your food and all that stuff so you know how to do it. Yeah. It sounds a little bit overwhelming from my perspective because I've never done it, but I bet you could break that down for us. Sure. Um, give us give us some big thinking in relationship to health. Like, how do we know if we're committed enough to make lasting change? Sometimes we know what we want, but sometimes we don't get started because we know how big that commitment is. And I know we just talked about um, the four things that James Clear yep. brings up um, to, to really, like, create the habit. Uh, and I love one of his quotes, which says, you don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. Correct. Um, But just walk us through, like, how can we create this lasting change for some of our health goals? First, I'm going to tell you, figure out who you're doing it for, right? That's always, to me, the who question is the single most powerful question you can ever ask. I just wrote that on my page as a cue. It doesn't matter whether it's, you know, who do I need to hire? Who do I need to become? Who do, whatever, who is always the most powerful question word that's out there. And you got to figure out who you're doing this for. Because if you're doing it for yourself, you probably will give up on yourself at some point. But there's someone you're probably doing it for. How many times does somebody get healthy because the doctor told them, if you don't, you're going to have a heart attack and die, Mm -hmm. right? Now they're doing it for their family or their kids, right? For me and my story earlier, it was for my daughter that I did it. And then it became, now the who was for Nita for a long time in there. Now the who is for the rest of the world that's looking at me because I've created this image. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, if I don't live up to it, Mm -hmm. who am I letting down by deciding to eat ice cream every single day for my dinner, right? Or not working out, who am I letting down? Because they're looking at me as that fit example for them. Right, and I noticed recently you bought Tonal, right? 
that yes. that exercise um, home equipment, gym. Yep. home gym. Yeah, that that sounds amazing. And and you did that again to just level up. Um, yep. You know, you're the host of two different podcasts. One which is health based. Then you're a, you know a coach, both personal and business coach. You run um, exercise like. Ragnar, you run Spartan. Spartan. I I need the I needed the weights that I wasn't getting without right. the but and I also know myself, Jolene. I have a set of weights in the garage. I took Dave's weight bench, right? Right up his house. I took Dave's weight bench and put it into my garage and it sat in my garage. I knew that the tonal would interact with me and make me want to do it. But you've set up these different facets of your life where it becomes almost built-in accountability to those things. Yes. So we, I really like what you've shared with us. Like, think about who do you need to hire or attach for accountability, support, encouragement, and not just the person who's going to be there cheering you on, you know, clapping, but the person who's going to, like, throw away the, the junk in the pantry, yes. you know? Um, and then who are we doing it for? Yep. And I, I personally think we can choose ourselves. Okay. Because we're worth it. Sure we are. And and we could be the number one person who we're doing it for because we care about it being a part of our we'll identity. We'll think it's good enough and stop. That's the difference. Who am I doing it for? Yeah, I'm worth it. Oh, wait, I like how I look now. I'm just going to stop. Sure. Instead of pushing through to whatever that final goal was because I'm doing it for someone else who I don't want to let down. I will let me down much quicker than I'll let you down. Absolutely. Right? If you're going to go to a gym, don't go on your own grab a friend. You'll let yourself down and not go. You'll never let them down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Health matters. There's the old quote, I'll never get it right, but you only have one body to live in or something, right? So treat it right. Whatever the, the actual quote is that goes with that. We only get one chance, right? And anything else. Now, some of you out there, you might have a medical challenge. Yes, there are people who have thyroid issues or other digestive issues or diabetes that they're battling and stuff. Okay. But overall, we can cure a lot of that stuff if we get a control of our health. And if we get our health under control. And the older we get, the harder it becomes. These are habits we need to create now. You've made it through your 20s or your 30s. Many of the people that are listening, some of you are going through it. That's when you had the fun. Fix it. Just like we talk in the wealth series on win, make, give. Imagine if you saved money in your 20s, what that compound interest would have turned into in your mm -hmm. 60s. If you wait until you're 40, you got to work a lot harder to have that same amount of money when you're 60. Imagine if you got grab on your health when you were in your 20s. There's nothing I wish more than going back in time and telling myself all these lessons before I got fat. Because if I could have, who knows where I'd be. Wow. I, um, I could take a lot of notes right there, Chad. And I just want to thank you, first of all, for being, being vulnerable and sharing your story. I think your directness does benefit people, um, but also your belief in others that they can do it too. And so thank you for, for bringing the story today to inspire other people. The Let's, audience asked, happy to share. They did ask. Now, what would you leave us with today? Any, any last thoughts or something that we could do today to, to either level up with where we're at or get started. Well, I would just give you uh, FM Alexander's quote again, right? People do not decide their futures. They decide their habits and their habits decide their futures. So who do you want to be? There's the who question again, right? Mm -hmm. Who do you want to be? And what does that person do each and every day? And then just go start doing it. It'll be hard at first. And before you know it, it'll be easy to do again and again and again. Thank you so much, Chad. And here's the thing. You have your own health journey and you get to create that and create this identity for yourself. It might not look just like Chad's. You might have nuances, but I hope you're able to write some things down today. Take it with you. Start today and um, just realize that your health always has to come first. And if you've been procrastinating, um, the best way to overcome procrastination from my perspective is to not wait to start anything tomorrow. Even if you ate ice cream for breakfast this morning, don't eat it for dinner, right? I'm poking at Chad now. Um, but thank you again, Chad. And let us know if you'd like to add on any other topics to the 15 Point Plan podcast. We'd love to continue hearing from you like this one. And we hope this episode ups your energy and we'll see you on the next one. 